Hello and welcome to Hashtag Awani with me, Sheehan Shannon. Today, December 10th, is a very special day. Today is the Human Rights Day, proclaimed by the United Nations General Assembly in the 1950s. This day brings to the attention the Universal Declaration of Human Rights as the common standard of achievement for all people and all nations. Everyone is entitled to all the rights and freedoms set forth in the Declaration without distinction of any kind, be it racial, political, or any other form. Human rights cover a wide range of issues, which includes access to basic necessities, equality, life, and the right to tell the truth. Closer to home, with the recent riot incident in Singapore, whereby an Indian national was killed by an accident, many quarters have said that there could be an underlying dissatisfaction among migrant workers that has sparked off the riot. Joining us on the line is Associate Professor Dr. Faish Noor from the S. Rajaratnam School of International Studies in Nanyang Technological University, Singapore, on his take on the situation. Hi, Prof. Now, the riot in Singapore has sparked various remarks, one of it being that there has been underlying tensions which was brewing between the locals in Singapore and foreign workers. Maybe you could give us your comments on this. Well, I think if we look at uh, what happened over the weekend in Singapore, um, uh, there are two observations that can be made at this stage. Uh, the first was the reaction from ordinary members of the local public, particularly on the Internet, uh, where um, it was uh, observed that quite a large number of people had uh, posted comments that were derogatory in nature. And this has been, I think, part of a. This has been part of a wider trend that we've seen in Singapore over the last few years, where a certain degree of anxiety has has emerged among a significant number of Singaporeans mm -hmm. about the influx of foreign workers in Singapore in general. Mm -hmm. uh, but having said that, um, uh, immediately um, after the event, there have also been uh, responses to these responses that have come from Singaporeans as well. Uh, and uh, one uh, example would be uh, the, uh, the Facebook page, um, Stamp Out Racism in Singapore, mm -hmm. where Singaporeans have also reacted to the racist comments posted by other Singaporeans. Mm -hmm. So the matter has become, uh, uh, you know, uh, it has been placed in the public domain. And I think it's interesting to see how, on the one hand, while there is this anxiety about uh, the number of foreigners uh, coming to work in Singapore, there's also been a considerable amount of solidarity um, mm -hmm. shown by Singaporeans for foreign workers, especially those in the um, uh, lower uh, uh, industrial and construction sectors. And it's interesting to note that um, uh, quite a number of Singaporeans have also come out uh, saying uh, that these people are important for Singapore's economy and that they actually play a vital role in Singapore's development. So it actually brought out both the best and the worst of Singaporean society at the same time. Yes, but Prof, how is the situation similar or is it different to what it is like in Malaysia? Well, if we look at the situation in Malaysia, I think a certain uh, similarity can be seen in the way in which Malaysians view foreign workers. And I, again, I think both Malaysia and Singapore are primarily trading economies <clears throat> and both are attempting to develop their economies in the direction of you know, uh, more competitive industries, high mm -hmm. technology industries. This requires a substantial amount of uh, infrastructural investment mm -hmm. in the form of you know, factories, uh, industrial zones, and unfortunately, um, uh, the construction of, of these new industrial areas, these industrial zones, has been left to companies that basically hire foreign workers because of the lower um, wages uh, mm -hmm. involved. Now, I think it, it, it's vital for Malaysians to understand that foreign workers play a very important role in Malaysia's economy as well, because for Malaysia to retain its competitiveness, uh, and if Malaysia wishes to keep the cost of production down, mm -hmm. then the only way out is to basically hire foreign workers to do jobs which um, ordinary Malaysians don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Now, if that is going to be the case, then I think it's, uh, it's a situation where we can't have our cake and eat it. If we mm -hmm. are going to depend on foreign workers, then I think um, we have to, to accept the fact that while these people work um, in our countries, in Malaysia, in Singapore, uh, they also have to be housed. They are human beings, for heaven's sakes. Mm -hmm. They deserve you know, the same uh, rights and entitlements as any other human beings. They have a right to rest. They have a right to, 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 um, to congregate. They have mm -hmm. a right 
to, to enjoy their day off. Um, and so I think it would be unfair um, to somehow wish these people away uh, and, and pretend that they don't exist. So a fundamental um, respect for the dignity of human labor mm -hmm. is, is what's required here. And I think this is important because you know, today is Human Rights Day, and, and it's, it's uh, coming at a time where you know, much of Southeast Asia mm -hmm. and East Asia's economic takeoff um, has been the result of uh, the employment of a substantial number of foreign workers mm -hmm. who, who do jobs like this, you know, who, who are part of the, uh, uh, you know, the, the industrial development of mm -hmm. our countries. They are, they are actually building the, the roads, the factories, the industrial zones. Uh, they also um, uh, cater to many other needs, uh, whether it's uh, domestic help or, or in the service industry. And I think um, you know, a, a common recognition, uh, a general recognition of the common human, human di dignity mm -hmm. that we, we all have is, is uh, long in order. I hope that it does not require a crisis like this to, to remind us of our fundamental obligations to treat human beings in, in the most uh, decent manner uh, uh, that's required. Here again, the emphasis is on enforcement. That's the responsibility of the state. The responsibility of Malaysians would be to you know, expect you know, uh, better services and, and, and better regulation because you know, uh, we need foreign workers in Malaysia. We need foreign mm -hmm. workers, if, especially if Malaysians don't want to work in the factories, mm -hmm. if Malaysians don't want to work in the uh, plantations mm -hmm. or in the, the industrial zones or the agricultural zones. So who's going to do this? Mm -hmm. Now, if we're going to we have, if we're going to have to accept the fact that we depend on foreign labor, mm -hmm. then I think we also have to you know, uh, increase our own uh, expectations of how labor is to be regulated in a manner that is both legal and mm -hmm. humane at the same time. And Prof, finally, since today is Human Rights Day, maybe you can tell us what are your hopes for a better tomorrow? I think obviously, uh, particularly in the case of you know very complex and plural societies um, such as Malaysia, there is still a need to emphasize the value of a universal Malaysian citizenship, mm -hmm. and, and and this is something of course that, that is at the core of, of, of Malaysia itself as a federation. Mm -hmm. It is embodied in the uh, the principles of the nation, the uh, Rukun Negara. Mm -hmm. But um, I think despite that, if we look at the state of Malaysian society today. You know, ethnic and religious concerns remain paramount for a lot of people, and I'm somewhat worried by the manner in which, um, you know, not all, but certain uh, uh, parties in Malaysia, certain groups, certain actors and agents in Malaysia, uh, continue to harp on issues of religious differences mm -hmm. or ethnic differences, because this is bringing us any closer to the notion of a complex and plural Malaysia, mm -hmm. uh, where our common citizenship is the thing that equalizes and unifies all of us. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it, it, it's odd that Malaysians are most united when they're actually living abroad, because then, you know, being Malaysian is the thing that equalizes all of them. Mm -hmm. But when they are back in the open country, um, they seem to emphasize their differences more than their similarities. I appreciate the fact that, you know, over the last few years, there have been attempts to, to, to actually articulate a national discourse that is that is uh, inclusive, mm -hmm. um, but you know Malaysia will be faced with very tough challenges in the coming years. Uh, next year, Indonesia will be having its elections. Mm -hmm. We are likely to see uh, tensions in our own backyard mm -hmm. in, in, in the ASEAN region. Of course, uh, everyone is looking at the increasingly important role played by both China and America and the mm -hmm. South China Sea. These are all matters that will impact on all of Malaysia. All mm -hmm. Malaysians are going to be affected, regardless of your race or religion. Yeah. And I think it's important for Malaysians to, to look at the bigger picture sometimes, mm -hmm. to look at our region, to understand the dynamics of what's happening in our part of the world, and to understand the fact that, you know, sink or swim, uh, you know, Malaysians will, will have to survive together. And with us today in the studio, he's a musician and also a social commentator all the way from Singapore. He's known for writing songs about racial and cultural integration. It is none other than Art Fazil. Hi, Art. Thank you Hello, so much hi, for she. being here. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having me here. Thank you. And, you know, the riots in Singapore has come to a shock to all of us, especially knowing how strict Singapore is. Maybe you can tell us your opinion about why this riot actually happened. Right, okay. 
I think in the, the perspective is that we have to look at it from uh, uh, an angle which this is an, uh, a secluded uh, situation because it involves uh, a set of foreign workers who, 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 you know, who had issues or whatever it is. Uh, and there was a, an incident which sparked the whole thing. So it's, it does not involve uh, Singaporeans in general, uh, the, the, the general population per se, but it is more of a, uh, a group of guys who were unhappy about something that happened and they reacted in, in a violent manner. Yes. Yeah. But how, how do you think Singaporeans actually feel about what happened? Well, right. well you think Sing Singapore is very much... Um, seen as very safe, you know, exactly. everyone is confident of walking around without being harmed and all that. So when, when something like this happened, uh, obviously it created a kind of a shockwave uh, through the online community especially. But again, I think because of the repeat uh, images that we see being played on YouTube on, and then being viral out on, on Facebook and all that, so you keep seeing the same images again and again of guys burning and looting or whatever it is, you know. So I think that created a sense of maybe slight fear and panic. Oh my God, what's going on? Yes. But I, th I really think from my personal perspective, I think it is it's a secluded situation which is, has been contained. Right. Yeah, but again, it also highlight the plight of migrant workers, which is a global situation, whether it's Dubai, whether it's Singapore, whether it's Malaysia. So I think there is a need to look into the, the welfare of, of, of these workers. Maybe they were homesick, maybe they didn't have enough entertainment, maybe we need to give more concerts for them, bring artists from Malaysia, Singapore, from India, from the, from the Tamil-speaking community maybe, you know, from the Hindi-speaking community, and entertain them. Because it's Sunday. It, it happened on a Sunday, it didn't happen during a, a working hour. Exactly, yeah. it's not a normal weekday. But uh, mm. picking up on what you just said just now about this fear that Singaporeans have now, uh, there are two types of migrant workers. There is the professional migrants mm -hmm. and we also have the working class. I mean, do you think in the eyes of the Singaporeans there's a difference between the two? Or uh, with what just happened recently on Sunday, um, that line is actually blurred? Uh, I think there's enough information to, for people to realise that these are migrant workers who are on contract basis. Maybe they are, they are construction workers. They are uh, there for maybe two years, three years, whatever amount of time they've been contracted to work in. And then they're off. They're back to their homeland and if you know, they're required, they might come back again under a different contract. Well, there are other set of migrant workers who are more kind of at a professional level where they are accountants and engineers who are more rooted in Singapore and may end up being a, a permanent resident or even taking up Singapore citizenship. So there's a, there's a line between these two. I think Singaporeans in general are, are kind of aware between these two types of uh, different levels of, 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 of migrant workers. Yeah, and I think you, you yourself actually can also be considered a foreign worker since um, you, are, you have both feet in, um, in Malaysia and in Singapore. And I have lived in London for 15 years and I know what it feels like to be a kind of a migrant and being foreign in a, a, a foreigner in a different country. Yeah. So, you know, there's emotional issues, you, maybe you're feeling homesick, maybe you miss your family and most of these guys are probably have children have wives, you know, back in their uh, country. So maybe these are, are things which uh, helped to, or, or rather, sparked in the, the the whole emotional outburst, which became, which turned out quite violent on, on that day. But do you think there's actually a difference between how a Western country, say like uh, the United Kingdom, and how an Asian country such as Singapore or Malaysia um, handle foreign workers, or the 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 way we actually perceive foreign workers? I think, yeah, there, there's a slight difference because also... Especially when, you, when we talk about human rights, I think um, yeah. that's something that's lacking in yeah, Asian countries yeah. in comparison to the United States. I Kingdom. think in comparison, maybe um, from what I've read, like what all the, uh, the stuff that happened uh, in, in, in Dubai, for example, I think when you read stuff, what, what happens in Dubai, for example, it's a lot more worse than compared to how the foreign workers are, uh, migrant workers are treated in Singapore or Malaysia. Yeah. So I think, and also because of the similar cultural backgrounds, like, you know, if you're from India, you're from China, or, there, there is certain element like you don't really miss the food because there's food from the similar type of food that you get from your, you know, from the same culture. Mm -hmm. So I think there is a slight difference in how things are approached. And I think uh, 
the, the grievances like, for example, the, 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 the protest from the, 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 the China workers, the bus drivers last year, yes. it was more because of uh, salary issues, not uh, because of living conditions or that, that may be a, another aspect of it. But I think in general it's more, uh, we, we actually, well, there's a commission of inquiry going on at the moment. We don't know what exactly what caused for them to go out and, and, and turn police cars and burn set things on fire. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I think there are many issues, many components in this situation because it's not just one, well, well it's something that, that sparked it off. But at the same time, it's, uh, I'm sure there are other uh, uh, periphery issues like maybe they are not comfortable, maybe they don't exactly. have enough entertainment or outlets and stuff like that. And also it was alcohol involved. From what from the reports I've, heard, I've read online, uh, the, in fact, the, the Singapore government has decided to um, uh, stop la alcohol being sold in certain premises in the area. Yeah. But maybe aren't you, we, uh, we don't have that much time at the moment, mm -hmm. but maybe you can summarize for us what you think can actually be done to help assimilate um, foreign workers and you know, people of a country like in Singapore or in Malaysia. I, I think the best thing, I mean I'm a musician, yeah. so I think the best thing is through music. You do events, concerts, you know, get foreign and local performers and generally give people a good time. Yes, and I'm I sure all of us out there, we are looking forward for your next performance. Hopefully, yes, yes, yes. yes. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so here. much thank Art, you. for being with us on thank Hashtag you, Awani. And so that's it for this block of Hashtag Awani. Stay with us. We're going to a quick break.